We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Uh, this session will be recorded and maybe someone, uh, the audience will come uh, later to on site or remotely. And now, uh, according to the schedule, uh, we will start our uh, session. Um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, I'm Ri Zhong from the Internet Society of China. Uh, I will serve the moderator today and sorry, for not being able to uh, attend on site. Uh, on behalf of the two uh, organizers, the Internet Society of China and the CICCSP and the, the China Association for Science and Technology, uh, please allow me to attend a warm welcome to all of you on site or online. The topic of the session is accelerating information accessibility uh, for the aging population. Uh, as facing the rapid growth of an aging population, uh, it is a core upon to empower the elderly through ICTs uh, by learning the skill of using internet so as to enjoy all the benefits in this digital and smart era. And China has attached importance to narrowing the digital divide that all stakeholders work together to pursue an inclusive digital society. And for the internet infrastructure, the Chinese telecom operators building uh, the world's largest 4G network uh, for easy access to the internet everywhere. Uh, in terms of the policy support, uh, the government's released a series of industry guidance. Uh, for example, uh, the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology has ever released two documents, uh, one called Guidance on Promoting Information Accessibility, and another named Implementation Plan to help the elderly solve a problem in using smart technology, targeting to eliminate the obstacle for the vulnerable groups, uh, including the elderly groups, uh, by reducing the cost uh, improving the terminal devices, services, and uh, applications. And to respond to the call, uh, the internet companies conduct the review the website or apps uh, to support more functions to realize information accessibility standards, uh, which set uh, by the industry association or stand organizations. And today, uh, we are very pleased uh, to have two stakeholder representatives uh, to share their best practice or insights uh, coming from internet companies, uh, Tencent, and from academic group, uh, Xiamen University. And my colleague, Ms. Wu Ping, uh, will moderate in the room chat room uh, for the remote participants. And uh, anyone could raise your hands or your leave message in the chat room if you have any question uh, after the two speakers are uh, sharing. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to invite Ms. Uh, Lu Siyu from Tencent to speak. Uh, Ms. Lu, uh, it's your floor. Uh, Lu Siyu, please, uh, you can share your screen. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Zhong. And it's my turn. And thank you for your time. Could you see the um, my sharing, my screen? Did you see that? Uh, Karen, no. Uh, maybe uh, Miss Lee, you can you can close your sharing screen. Okay. Okay, Lu, uh, Lu Su, it's okay for your screen. Okay, thank you everyone. 
Uh, it's, it's, it's an honor to be here to sharing uh, with you. And uh, my name is Lu Shiyu. I'm from Tessent Research Institute. And thank you for the invitation of IGF. The topic I'm sharing today is Tech for Age, the analysis of the characteristics of the use of mobile phones by the elderly. Um, before I start my sharing today, I would like to share a story with you, a story of mine. Yeah, uh, last year, because of the COVID-19 outbreak, my community was closed 24 hours a day. All the residents had to stay out of their homes for a month. After the closure, we have three ways to get food. The first way is to buy food um, from, uh, through the apps, and then um, the volunteers can get the food um, back to our homes. The second way is to scanning QR codes. And the last way is to exchange our own stock of food and help each other through the WeChat group formed by the re uh, residents of the community. Although you can see there um, are many ways to get food, um, any of them rely on the premise that you have a smartphone and you can use it well. I researched my community at the time, and um, in a community of um, 3,015 households, there were 131 seniors who did not live with their children, and they could not use their uh, smartphones on their own. When we went to the homes of the elderly as volunteers, there were more than a dozen households that had been without food for more than three days. The first thing they said to us was, can I borrow your phone? Old age is a necessary stage for life for everyone and uh, constitutes a visible growth in society. By the end of the 2020, there were more than 260 million elderly people in China and uh, it will be expanded that the group will account for one third and, um, and um, by 2000 and, um, uh, two, 2050. While the demographics of the society are rapidly becoming older, but the technology products are continue to get newer and newer. In the past year, the internet is helping economic and social recovery and growth such as teleconference, um, online learning, contactless delivery, and something others. Since 2016, we started to do some research related to the technology for the age. And we invested the needs of the old people when using smartphones. The old people in this picture uh, he do not hold a phone single-handedly like young people do. And uh, he also do not flexibly use their samples to turn the pages and also rarely do the two-finger dragging action. They also press the keys very hard, repeatedly touching and pressing. As one gets older, one's ability to recognize and search will decrease. Uh, 60 year old man has only 30% of the amount of light that can enter his retina as 20 year old young man, and only about 12% after the age 70. Old people also gradually lose their sensitivity to the sound and uh, even some past uh, familiar sound, even if their close relatives will begin to become difficult to recognize. However, more than 30% of the elderly have been asked by their children to give up using smartphones for fear of their parents being cheated. Young people in China are so busy so that they do not have enough time to have their parents to resolve their doubts one by one. But is it really hard for seniors to learn smartphones and um, do you know how many steps it takes to send a smile in WeChat. It's about eight to nine. 
um, it's a little operation breakdown, you also need to take eight to nine steps to send a smile in WeChat. The aunt, um, the aunt Zhang in the left in the picture, uh, she had taught more than 90 people, 90 seniors to learn to use WeChat. And she created a group that for the seniors in which they can say good morning, good afternoon, good, good evening to each other every day. For the elderly, it is um, it's a great comfort and reward to see their smiles are welcomed and responded to. Most people who have seniors to learn to use their smartphones are also old people. So helping seniors to build and mend social networks is one of the best parts to help them to across digital divide. But it's important to be careful, do not push the seniors into a vast network, but to help them uh, integrate into our organizations and get full practice. A sense of belonging and self-confidence our research shows that the internet access and use great enhance the, uh, the connection between the old people and their close contacts, provides convenient living and learning service, and in fact, greatly increase the interest, interest and the confidence uh, of the old people in learning and living, which has a positive impact on their mental state. Life is all bound of age, but the progress uh, of the technology does not slow down. How to understand, respect, and accept old age is, uh, is really a necessary lesson for all the people to learn in our lives. We also need a more long-term mechanism to involve the government, industry, um, and the citizens to create an all-age friendly digital society. And then this is my end of my speech. Thank you very much for being here. And Mr. Zhou. Okay. Thank uh, thank you very much for Ms. Lu's sharing. And then let's invite Ms. Li Duodu from Xiamen University. Uh, it's your floor, Ms. Li. You can share your screen. Okay. Okay, I'll put your mic. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can yes, we can hear you. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Do, uh, Ms. Lu. Uh, hello everybody. I'm Li Do from Xiamen University. I'm so happy to uh, do the presentation about the blind role of information, concept, technology, and the system of information accessibility. I have done some research in information accessibility for several years ago. So I want to introduce myself for the people who have uh, visual, visually impaired high I'm an Asian girl with short black hair and yellow skin and black ass. Um, I'm wearing a sweater today. I'm in my dormitory in China. This palm point is not complicated. Uh, it's contained uh, it's content three parts to brief introduce the frame and history about information accessibility. The first part is concept. The concept of barrier free or sensible started from the field of architecture. For example, barrier free passengers for wheelchair user and the blind roads for the visually impaired. Actually, information accessibility is the blind role of the information world. 
which is used by people who have difficulties to assess information. For those who set up the information order, maybe they didn't expect that not everyone can assent to information equally. Information accessibility means that everyone, whether young or old, disabled or not, can obtain and use information equally conveniently. Facts have proved that technology is the most important fact in the development of information accessibility. It began in the United States in the 1980s, which enabled people with disabled, disabled to equality use various electronic terminal devices, including computers, to work. It is most vital fact is the information accessibility development of technological information and at the same time, industry standards and international standards are important for the development of science and technology. At the 13th United Nations IGF, UN Secretary General Mr. T Guters called for attention to the contribution and the demands of the disabled the elderly and other people in the digital economy to ensure the fair distribution of resource to bring the digital divide. For those who are engaged in technology, sometimes if you want to understand others, you might put on his shoes, wear her high heels, or somebody wear chairs, walk for a kilometers. When we work online or attend a meeting online, don't forget that there are still 3 billion people in the world who haven't accessed the internet. Most of them are the elderly, the disabled, and the people from backward areas. Information accessibility is the somatic project. It's not only the barrier-free living environment, but also the information environment and the cultural environment. The information disorder of elderly mainly comes from visual disorder and the hearing disorder. China has the greatest number of elderly people in the world. At the end of 2021, the number of elderly people over 60 years old in China reached 216 million exceeding the total population of Japan. By 2030, the number of elderly people over 16 years old in China will reach 350 million, exceeding the population size of the United States. Nature magazine reported COVID-19 per pandemic has had a significant impact on the mental health of the elderly living in the community, and the situation of those lonely elderly people is much worse. Therefore, information accessibility is not only for the perspective of social inclusion, but also in infrastructure of China. During the COVID-19 crisis, the internet proved to be helpful in organize our lives to an extent that we could have never foreseen two years ago. This has only confirmed how precious and valuable part of our lives is actually is. But in, in another hand, the opportunity is, before I attend the conference, my elders and disabled friends have learned about IGF and uh, Cutwise in advance through their conference accessibility website by IGF and the Polish government. At the same time, I hope the era of artificial intelligence, science, and technology can make the blind role of information access to the fast developing infla information speed uh, a super high highway. My presentation is over. Okay, uh, thank yeah. you, Miss Liz, uh, sharing. That's very uh, insight, very 
uh, inside the ball. Uh, is there anyone have the uh, question or uh, would like to interact with our uh, speakers? Uh, you can raise your hand in the chat room, uh, uh, both on site or online or remote participant. Uh, do you have any question? Uh, you can throw your question into the chat room or just raise your hand to let me know. Thank you. Ahmed, uh, just now one, okay. Uh, I, I saw the, uh, the chair will have a question. I uh, have a question for Ms. Li Duo Duo. Uh, he say, his question is, uh, what is the potential use of information as a disability for other people in society? Uh, Ms. Li, could you make a response? I don't know how, can you hear me? Hello? Uh, yes, I, I can, we can hear you. Uh, you can make a response to the question in the chat room. Okay. Uh, he said, uh, he asked, yeah. uh, what's the potential use of information accessibility for other people in society? Um. Okay. Oh. Okay. Anybody uh will get get older and older and uh, will some uh, visually repair or hearing uh, repair. And uh, in this situation, uh, anybody needs the information accessibility to assess the information. Uh, or may you in the situation you are in a very noisy environment to obtain the information. And uh, uh, you watch the TV and you want to uh, hear the, um, uh, uh, to hear the, 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 the dialogue, but you can not hear because in the in a noisy environment. And in this time, information accessibility can help you to uh, know what the dialogue is. And, uh, um, you know, there's a uh, there's the uh, and and the information accessibility is for the deaf and the blind people uh, to uh, obtain the information to um, and to let them to have the opportunity to go to the school, get the better life. Actually, um, I'm the coder. My parents are deaf. Uh, so I'm the coder of, I'm the children of the deaf adults, coder, C-O-D-A. And my father is good at uh, math. My mother is good at art. But uh, in, in their um, uh, very young, in, when they very young, there's no information technology and policy to help them to go to the higher education uh, or college. So, um, that's why I do the information research. I, I, I do the information accessibility in, uh, research. I want to help them and uh, my friends to get the information, get the better life, get the better opportunity to do, uh, um, to get the better life. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Miss Lee, for sharing your story. Uh, thank you. 
And I have another question for um, Tencent from Ms. Lu Siyu. Uh, what are the Tencent's thoughts and the practice on aging appropriate uh, retrofit? Uh, Ms. Lu, could you make a response? Yes, thank you for your <clears throat> thank you for your question. Uh, now we have nine products that have started aging friendly renovation, like you asked, including turning up the font and the volume. Um, in addition, we also exploring how to teach the old people to use smartphones. For example, um, Tencent has launched the, the Civil Age Academy project and you can search it on, on, uh, on Google or, or, or um, uh, any other uh, program uh, where the older um, people can learn the courses through WeChat mini program. In addition, Tencent is also creating um, more tech knowledge product to serve the old people, such as um, uh, applying AI products in Shenzhen nursing homes to have the uh, elderly identify the risk of the, the, the risk of falling down in advance. Mm. We will continue our effort to create more benefits for the elderly with the technology. And we like the uh, question in the text box said, and some uh, technology um, to help people about people, about other people's health problem. And that's what uh, is exploring now. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And I know we also see uh, sort of, uh, a question from the chat room. Uh, are there any suggestion in the aspects of a technology we could do in the future of elderly? Uh, if anyone could uh, make a response or have any suggestion. Uh, from Tencent, if there any, uh, for example. Uh, but for my personal uh, suggestion is to uh, the AI technology could help to, uh, to do some help for the elderly in the future. For example, uh, the uh, senior people, they maybe could not, uh, they are maybe not, uh, not used to uh, to see the screen, they only can uh, use the AI technology to, uh, for, for example, to use the, uh, the picture identification technology. Uh, uh, for example, they just move their, move their hand or just to read uh, voices uh, identification, just to read a sentence and then smart, tech, and the smart devices can make a response. For example, I will, Say it, uh, uh, say the word. For example, to open uh, my app, to open my uh, e-banking, or to open my uh, e-book. Uh, now, a, the my cell phone will make a response to follow my instruction. Maybe that will be uh, uh, that will be uh, helpful for the elderly people. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, the secretary uh, just remind our uh, the time uh, uh, it's uh, it's over it's uh, it's over from this session and just once again thank you very much for the two speaker from Tencent Shaman University and also thank you very much for the uh, remote participant to raise a question and to interact with us uh, thank you very much uh, bye 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 bye. Thank you. Also, thank you very much for the working staff. Thank you.